Learn how a man was stripped of his living but gained control of his life, the temper tantrum that ruined a marriage, and my story of slaying the dragon. Welcome to No Bow Tie, where we conquer emptiness and frustration, discover our uniqueness, and live with unrelenting joy. I'm John No Bow Tie, Swoboda author and musician. Today, we're going to talk about how being a control freak is going to set you free. Be sure to subscribe. No matter what you call it, habits, rituals, routines, whatever it is, you're making decisions based on gaining some kind of control. It can be a situation control, emotional control, job control, financial control, relationship control. Whatever it is, you're making decisions constantly to make sure that you are the one in control. But what happens when you lose control? Sometimes we lose control because of our inner self, our appetites, our drives, misunderstanding how our objectives. Uh, We get addicted to achievement and we lose control of what we're about and how we're going to manifest ourselves in the world. But first I want to talk about when control overcomes you. A friend of mine recently, he found himself on his apartment floor. He woke up to find out that he had possibly had a concussion. He went in. He had a brain tumor. They explained to him the, the, the possibilities and the, the future that this could cause. And, of course, it became dire and urgent. But in this short period of time, in a 24-hour span, He lost control of his job. He was no longer able to work with the condition. He could not drive. He couldn't get on an airplane. He could do very little work to gain employment, and he had already established that employment. employment. The biggest factor was he wasn't sure how he was going to pay the rent, buy food, and continue. The world, his situation, had totally caused him to lose control. And he had only one decision that he could rely on, which we will talk about at the end of this episode. It's all going to come together with the answer for what you need in your life. Think for a moment about when you've lost control or been forced to. There's a sense of desperation and anxiety and doubt. All of these things set in and make you feel less, a lot less sure, less confident of everything that you do. And you start faking it through the world. You fake your emotions. You start faking what you want to do. You, you rationalize what you want to do because you've got to, you've got to sustain some kind of power from being just imploding by the control that's being put on you. And it can be in a career situation, a marriage. I had a friend who was married and she suspicioned She just suspicioned that her husband was trying to gain control of their relationship so that he could depart at one point. To to respond to it, she went out and closed their savings account, totally cleared the savings account out. When he found this out, he, of course, responded, and they now have a divorce. Meanwhile, his reasoning had nothing to do with doing her harm. He was having some personal problems that he didn't want to express, and he wanted to gain control of that before he shared it with her. Her lashing out was one example, one of many examples of how we act when we can't get the control that we need. Take it with with children. What is a temper tantrum? They lash out at the control that they, they don't feel like they have, and so they, they, they reach for an internal power, not their strength, not their personal strength. They reach for an internal power, and it doesn't work that way. You can't sustain power over a situation outside of you. It will not last. You can, however, use the strength inside of you to sustain the control that you need that we're going to talk about in great length. It's going to be very exciting. You probably remember a time in your own life where you lashed out because you, you felt that you lacked the control. You did something irrational because of the way you felt. You were feeling that anxiety of life 
that it, things were suppressing you and it wasn't going well. So you lashed out. And that lashing out really is just a false gain of control. We see it all the time with powerful people. They control other people, but they cannot control their minds. So we, we see it um, instilling scarcity mentalities. If you don't do this, there won't be enough of that for you. We also see it in raising children. We instill fear in them to control them. Santa Claus is watching you. God is watching you. All of these things that we... These are false gain of control. You're not establishing a better relationship this way. And even in the marriage, you know, the tit for tat, if you do this, I'll do that. Or the worst one is the passive aggressiveness, that you don't say why you did it, but you exhibit some kind of false control to gain where you're at in the relationship so that you have your finger on the situation. We see the false control in jobs with comparison goals and uh, you know, even sabotaging other people's progress so that you can gain in comparison to them, not as a team. We see it in su superiority thinking. And the one that gets me the most is the images. We try to gain control of what people think of us through the image of the car we drive, the clothes we wear, the tattoos that we might have. The, you know, the way we exhibit uh, the image in our life. And I don't care. I don't care what car you drive, what clothes you have, what tattoos you have, all of that. That's all fine. Tattoo your whole body, buy the best car in the world. But let me ask you this. Why are you doing it? Why do you do that? What are you exhibiting? What is it you want from those things? Is it to help others or is it to gain a control of how people see you? One great example of being controlled and taking that and turning that energy around into uh, having control is the Declaration of Independence. But even it was flawed. The, you know, back then, the colonies were frustrated with being controlled by England. And you know the story. You know, they lashed out and declared their independence. But in the Declaration of Independence, it says that we are all created equal. Meanwhile, Huge amounts of people, very large cultures were totally being controlled. You know, the genocide of the Indians, that we, we would employ the Chinese and then kick them out of the country. Women couldn't vote. Uh, blacks could not purchase land. There was still all that control. But one thing at a time, because of what we're going to talk about in a moment, one thing at a time that slowly started turning to where now women can vote and, of course, always should have. Blacks can buy property. There are, and the examples keep going into where we know they should have been in the first place because of the inner sense of control that they exhibit. And now we're going to break free from all of this. All of the previous examples, there's one thing that is totally redundant in the lashing out and the way that control gets out of hand and can cause a lot of harm in your life if it hasn't already. Addictions, addictions are not just about smoking, drinking, and gambling. Addictions get into how you control your situation by reaching for your phone and scrolling, or how you ignore others, which basically is the same thing. Or you take on extreme habits of of eating and gaming and all these things. Those are all misdirected issues of what we're going to talk about now, and that is the breaking free moment of self-control. If you're going to be a control freak, be a self-control freak. When you do that, you have an inner strength, not power. You have an inner strength that turns into power in your life. When you decide, when you watch the words that come out of your mouth, the, the habits that you have, the, and you follow your conscience to where you're acting on habits that will create good in the future more so than just comfort in the moment. I'll say that again. You're acting on habits that will cause good in the future, not just comfort in the moments. I say that because we are inundated with point-and-click pleasures that only satisfy the moment. Walk around at any airport and count how many people are staring at their phones because they can hardly bear to be present in the airport. 
take the time and realize the control you have over your decisions. You can control all of those things that build you as a person. When you control yourself, and I'm talking about appetites, your health standards, the way you spend, how you judge, what your attitudes are, and most of all, your thinking. When you control those things, you will have an inner sense of strength that nothing outside of you can take away or control. Let me tell you my story. I went through a period of extreme bad habits, very addictive habits. I had a bad depression and it was compounding into you know a bad situation. My only goal was to just feel normal. Have you been there? That's a tough place to be. I started to study neurochemistry and the effects that our thinking have on producing how we feel. In a long story short, I realized that I could produce neurochemistry uh, responses in me through my thinking. This was the greatest control I'd ever experienced in my life. I could control how I felt by, by what I said, what I thought, what I acted on, and how I saw the rest of the world. And when I did that, then I had, because I had that sense of control, a sense of strength, and you have it too. When you, when you control yourself, there's something in you, there's a flame in you that lights that cannot be put out. And you can do a multitude, multitude of things with that strength. When I realized it, I started making more serious career choices. I made changes in my life that were based on what I strongly desired instead of what I just was supposed to be. I had talks with people about my honest point of view that I should have exhibited before, but it let them know where I stood. I was honest about all relationships. I even got rid of some of the work that I was doing because it was controlling me. I was not controlling it. I wasn't playing a part in its development. It was playing a part in developing me, how it saw it needed to happen. When I put all of that to the end, I became the happiest person I'd ever been in my life. That energy caused me to imagine a better life. I started paying attention to my ideas, my intrigues, my inspirations, and it developed into a new image. I didn't have to buy anything to create the image. It came from the inside out. I invite you to start working with the inner strength and in changing. Start with your thinking, your attitudes, your judgments, especially about yourself. And then notice when something is controlling you, how you can, how you can sabotage it just through your thinking. You don't have to let those things burn in your mind. Now, we've run out of time, but next week I want you to learn about a student who I caught cheating, but yet he got an education, why birds don't necessarily flock together, and how your habits are causing your habits. Be sure to subscribe. Go to nobowtie.com slash life and get the answers to what's going to create a better life for you in the future. Thank <laughs> you.